Tailgate, you really gotta have. You gotta have some good beer. You gotta have some good looking ladies. And you gotta have body paint. It's an essential thing to make a good tailgate. You have to have beer, you have to have a grill, and you have to have tons of people. Music, food, beer. Three things. Uh, you have to have good food, good friends, and lots of beverages. Just a rocking good time. My favorite part about tailgating is the general atmosphere. Everyone is here to drink, eat, and have a really, really good time. Just seeing everybody, all my friends that you don't see all the time. I mean, everybody comes together at the game, so it's a lot of fun. I would have to say all the Rams just joining together and just having a good time. It's a fabulous setting and we can't wait to watch the game. Just getting next to all the good fans and just hanging out, drinking some beers and being here for the same reason, and that's to cheer on the Rammies. a couple times a week um, for different reasons. On Mondays we come and harvest all the vegetables because on Tuesdays we have a produce stand. We um, harvest them and we load them onto the bike trailer and we take them down to the plant science building to set up the produce stand. I came to the produce stand just because I love seeing just like students um, rising up and producing their own food and exp I, I don't see like any better way to be more local than right on your campus. I was walking back to my friend's bike and we saw that there was veggies and I love veggies. And I bought, so this is tiger melon and cherry tomatoes and then tomatillos. Uh, I bought a green hubbard. I didn't know what a green hubbard was until today. Veggies, they're organic. Now that it's fall, there's still a few things left to do. Um, and we've had our whole season of growing behind us, and now we're getting ready for next year. We um, have a whole bunch of garlic that we had saved from this previous season, and we separated all of the little cloves, and now we're planting them in holes. So right now it's October 13th, and we just did our last stand on October 11th. And in the spring, probably like mid-May, around Mother's Day, we'll have a big plant sale, and you can basically get all the vegetables you need for your own garden. Mousemobiles and transforming sets took center stage, and Pooter School District students celebrated the end result of over six months of work. It's been really exciting. It's kind of one of those things that happens after a culmination of months and months of work and kids have been working so hard. Teams chose specific problem challenges that range from mousetrap powered cars to multi-purpose sets. 
the team read the challenge, they chose the full circle challenge, which they explained was an item that has to change at least at least three times during a skit. So over this side? This team chose the extreme mouse mobile problem. What they have to do is create a car or automobile that runs off of the power from a mouse trap. We're trying to raise the sun. Up. After some last minute preparations, the teams took to the stage. You got it, girl. One, two, three. For this year, we are a qualifying tournament and teams that um, take first or second place this year will be allowed to advance to the state tournament on April 9th in Loveland. For CTV News, Brian Roxbury. Here we are again. I'm understanding that Franklin Avery lived on Mountain Avenue. I am Colonel William McCollins. I was commander of the U.S. Army troops. I am Franklin Avery. In 1873, I planned the streets in Fort Collins. I am Elizabeth Stone. I am better known as Auntie Stone. I am William Stover. I moved to Fort Collins in 1870. It was a hard life. We were lonely, hungry, and had to withstand the harsh weather. We often came ill and died along the way. Sometimes we were attacked by bears. We trapped beaver most often. In the early 1900s, an industry that grew quickly was sugar beet farming. The beet tops proved to be an excellent food for sheep. Many generations of Rafaka have lived in Fort Collins. 